Good morning, good morning, good morning. God, you know the thing about winter? It's just, people get like human. I mean, uh, people get like bears. Humans get like bears. All you want to do is hibernate. I mean, it's, there's light just coming up right now. December 21st, the shortest day of the year is coming up. So, I'm just like, ah, uh, all I want to do is just stay in bed. Ooh, did you yawn? Oh. <laughs> anyway, oh, it's starting to warm up in here. So, what are we going to talk about this morning? I said I was going to talk about treasure. But as I was going through my book, So You Want to Be a Reality TV Star, everything I learned about sex, drugs, fraud, rock and roll, and Vipers as team leader of Discovery Channel's Treasure Quest Snake Island. I was delving further into a bunch of other like really screwed up stuff as a result of Discovery Communications. It's not as a result of Discovery Communications, it's just that Discovery attracts a, a very interesting group of people who have this need to be on one of their reality TV shows. And you may be asking, so why did I get on Treasure Quest? The way I got on which was actually very different from just about everybody else, was that I was asked to, first I was uh, one of my uh, fans of my book, The Bamboo Chest, if you haven't picked up this copy, I highly suggest it, who said, hey, there's a casting for, for something related to treasure. And I'm going, huh, okay. Well, did this person actually read my book, which is I'll never go on another treasure hunt again? And by the way, Discovery did help me keep that promise. I have, since I went into Vietnam, I have not been on a real treasure hunt since. So, <laughs> oh my God. But it's wild. It's like, the things people will do for reality TV, and as I've said repeatedly, it's almost like by getting on share this link it's going like who knows it's almost like people get on reality tv it's like they want to rewrite their personal history their family history and as you read in the new book so you want to be a reality tv star you know that uh actually quite a few of my co-stars uh, are rewriting or trying to rewrite personal family history we know the situation with brett tudor and his stolen valor Kind of like trying to make a Superman out of a Mighty Mouse. But hey, I said I was going to show you the new grips for this thing. So now it is loaded. I carry this thing loaded because it's an active weapon for me because it's got a proper grip. So right now I'm going to unload this thing. Make sure you know. When somebody gives you a weapon, make absolutely sure that that sucker is unloaded. It's unloaded, nothing in the in the chamber, nothing in the magazine well. So let me just reload this back into the magazine. And one of the reasons of the TAC Ops, the P226 TAC Ops, is you get four magazines, 20 each. Boom, boom. So for those of you who sometimes feel undergunned, this is your... Personal wet dream. So drop the hammer. Now, while I'm talking, I will remove these grips and put on the new Hogue Piranha grips, which is the next best thing to having skateboard tape on your on your grips. So Treasure on Treasure Quest. How many of you actually asked that question? The one that I was always, always asking myself. See, it moves just like that. Jesus, comes right off really easy. Why is it that they have us on these radio shows and, and they had Megan on a TV show in the morning in Denver or whatever? And uh, then Brett, you know, doing the YouTube flash, and then he was 
on TV in Austin, Texas, where he's from. Why is it that, uh, and actually, it's in Austin where we're going after him because for him being my second tortfeasor. So tortfeasor, that's the guy that uh, assaults you. For his assault, when he uh, jumped me, actually I'm the victim who was actually sucker punched and initially attacked by uh, by uh, the guy who uh, shouldn't be playing with coke, Jeremy Whalen. And... Uh, I had, uh, he was the one who took me from a prone position because in defending myself from Jeremy, I put him on the ground. What do you do? You get attacked? You're not supposed to stand there and take another punch to the face, are you? No. You remove the threat. Well, I thought I had the threat removed until suddenly I am on a prone position and I got Jeremy on the ground and suddenly I'm on my back with uh, Brett Tudor, People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive, wrapping his legs around my legs, and he's got me in a choke, in a uh, strangle chokehold. You know, like, uh, he's been watching a little bit too many uh, uh, MMA uh, fights, and thinking that's how you restrain somebody. Well, you know what? When we used to go and take prisoners, that's not how we restrained people because you might actually kill them when you do that. And that's actually why officers in law enforcement are also taught not to go to that one immediately, that there are a variety of other types of holes in order to restrain somebody. Okay. Ooh, that's looking pretty sexy right there. And uh, so, yeah. So that led to uh, some injuries that uh, I guess I'll be talking about in my uh, deposition. Or actually, the doctors have talked about. Yeah, your neck doesn't uh, feel so good after that. So, treasure. The treasure of the, of the Trinity. So it's real quick. All you do is just take the screws. And you put them back in there. And you want to get the ones that are from Hogue. You don't want to keep on using the ones from Seek, okay? Just as a heads up on that. And um, how many people actually have wondered, wondered about these treasures that are supposedly being found? Let's see, on Treasure Quest, on Curse of Oak Island. See, there's actually an actual procedure. So I do have an archaeology background. I also have an investigation background. I have an intelligence background. There are things that you do, like photography. You know, that was the thing when I was watching uh, uh, the first Narcos series, and they had the protagonist um, going out and photographing a uh, a a shoot 'em up scene. Yeah. Um, that brought back a lot of memories, let me tell you. You know, like your post-battle photographs that you take, pictures of the dead, make sure that the guys that are dead are the guys that you wanted to make sure were uh, removed from the equation. And so that's documented and brought back so that people back in, in Intel can check them off as no more, no longer threats. Well, same thing is done in archaeology, where you set up, just like in a crime scene, you take full, I mean, if you do it well, it's none of this like, oh, take a copy of this and take a copy of that. You take a full setup scene. It's just like in film, too. You take a full up scene, setting up. You set up the scene, and then you go around, and then you go and start picking out particulars that you personally think are interesting. But you don't do that until you take a full fo collection of photographs setting up the scene. Okay? Well, how much did you see that happening? You saw it happening a little bit, but like when the treasure was found, quote, the treasure, 
like the the mask of Inti, you know, it's pulled up by Megan. If that was a real archaeological dig or a site that we were investigating, oh, how quick was that? How cool is that? Those are nice. And man, it's almost like my sandpaper. Dang. Oh. Well, if it doesn't snow today, I might go out and uh, run this gun. So, the uh, think about how people are depicting an actual archaeological site. See, because when you see, I mean, Nat, Nat Geo still does it properly. You know, you've got like the, the Egyptian archaeologist who takes people out and shows the pharaohs and all that kind of stuff. And you see the site and they're, and they're documenting everything. They're doing grids. How many times did you, see, did you see us do like a proper grid on Treasure Quest? You know? <laughs> Which, by the way, that whole scene with the village in the second season on the river... That's down the river from a ski resort. Yeah, the the Rio Club. Yeah, it's it's. Everybody's hey Argentina, Argentinos. Se puede visitar este sitio en el río, eh? Va a ver donde no, donde fuimos. <laughs> so basically, what I said, hey, my Argentine friends, go check it out. Go to. Uh, uh, Rio Club, you know, Club Rio, and go look at the, uh, at the site, it's, uh, is it upriver or downriver? It's downriver from, uh, from the club, which is where we'd have lunch, you know, during our, our lunch breaks. Did I say, yeah, that was like, you know, like, instead of the craft table, they would, like you'd have on a normal film. By the way, do you know where my background in film actually started? If you read my book, The Bamboo Chest, yes. Pick up a copy of The Bamboo Chest. My first time in film. Do you remember a movie called The Killing Fields? It was an Academy Award film. Well, guess what? I got a job as one of those Marines that you see running around on that film. Yeah, they hired us out of the Rama Hotel in Bangkok. Yeah, it was like every Farang, every farang, farang or Falang, depending on uh, which, uh, which area of Thailand uh, you come from. Falang or Farang. You know, the trading of the L's and the R's and Thai. Um, was hired to go in and play extras on that film. You know, so for me, it was uh, it was like 45 bucks a day. 45 bucks in Bangkok when I was living in the slums, which actually was a pretty kind of cool place to be living at that time. Now, I went back there and it's not even a slum anymore. They, they built a, uh, a, um, a bunch of big high-rises. And on that soy yisip song, yeah, soy yisip song Sukumbit, and that's over in uh, off of Sukumbit on uh, in Bangkok. But uh, yeah, man, this was too easy to tra change these grips. And it, man, these Piranha grips, these are the Extreme Series, the Extreme Series from uh, yeah, there you go, Extreme Series from Hogue. These are freaking kick butt. Let me tell you. Look at that. Look at that. I told you I was going to change them out. These are the ones I did. I customized myself. I do my style. You know, court crab style. And here they are from Hogue. And man, I was turned on to these. And these hold on. So, this is hot. So, I will set this down here right now. And we'll continue talking about the treasure. So, hmm. What about that treasure? Like here. Here is my first tortfeasor, Jeremy. Jeremy Whalen with the real. Oh, that's a sacrificial to me. That's real. And the reason it's real is that. Discovery had his brother, he and his brother, go and purchase it, illegally grave robbed in Peru, which Jeremy is very well versed in this because when he was a kid, that's one of the ways he found to support himself when he wanted to live over there as an ex 
Pat on his own. So it's really hard to get a job for an adult. So what do you think it was like for somebody who was younger? So one of the ways is you can go and hustle. So Jeremy learned how to hustle artifacts to turistas who would come to Peru. And he'd take them back to the States and sell them through his little black market. Because he actually has a background all the way back to high school as being a drug smuggler and a drug dealer. Yeah, by his own admission on set. So, which I found very interesting as we follow the leads into Megan's background with her ex-boyfriend, Mark Rackley. Yeah, that's in here too. But, and that's documented. Yeah, I found the arrest record for Mark Rackley back in Beaumont, Texas. You know how that happened? That's kind of wild. So when you're gonna smuggle marijuana across the border from, uh, see, I thought it was like they caught them. You know, remember it was, uh, uh, was it uh, the three M's, uh, Manny, Mark, and, uh, and Megan on Animal Planet, Extreme Encounters, I think was the show, where she and uh, Manny Puig would go swimming with the sharks and the alligators. Yeah. Well, Mark, just like Jeremy, also has a thing for uh, chemicals. And he's been busted repeatedly. I mean, man... When I looked at his rap sheet, I was like, dang, man, that is freaking wild. How is this guy not in federal prison for life? Because he's got this ability to freaking like slip out of things, which is really wild. But yeah, one of his arrest records, that was the one where Megan perjured herself by her own admission on the magic bus. So read that chapter, the magic bus. Yeah, that's a good one. Everybody tells all their secrets. That's why we learned about uh, Brett Tudor's background. He never did talk about the stolen valor, but he talked about some pranks he played with the cops in Austin when he was a kid. Yeah. Didn't get busted for that one. Yeah. You and I would. So, yeah, the Toomey one of, and the fetishes. Look at them. You want to see a real artifact? And see, when I talk about treasure, it's all treasure. If you're into history, you're an archaeologist, you think that the importance of our history is so great because our history is so screwed up right now because so many people are rewriting it to fit their own personal greedy agendas. And we're paying, your kids will pay, and your great-grandkids will pay. As a matter of fact, we're already paying. That's why we got all this stuff happening with all this turmoil We've got, we basically got, it's like the 60s. You know, the 60s was not like, hey, happy love and uh, all that kind of stuff. The, the 60s was, let's see, the second civil war in the United States. We are now, in my honest opinion, in the middle of the third civil war. And the question is, when does it get fully hot? Because most wars, they start off a little cold, and then they start getting speed, and getting speed, and getting speed, and then boom! There you are at Fort Sumter, okay? Now, yeah, we talked about the, uh, about Jeremy and, oh, okay. Yeah, Stolen Valor. Well, there are ways to get uh, the boob tube for that one, the booby prize. Who's that? Oh, that's Dale Comstock and my birthday brother, Michael Hawk. Remember what I said? It's like, People, once they get to, it's like a drug. Once they get on TV, it's like they want to get back on TV. And there are people who are honorable, and they want to do the right thing, and they want to tell the truth. And that's one of the reasons that I'm talking to you right now. And that is, is because I want to make sure that you do get the full background so... History is not written, especially my personal history, is not written by some freaking uh, ding-dong who wants to, who has his own or her own agenda. So that's how I put this stuff out. And also so that Discovery doesn't silence me about some real criminal activity. So yeah, Dale Comstock. Yeah, Dale Comstock saying, this is an affidavit by Dale Comstock helping Joe Tetai because... In my honest opinion, from what I've heard, it's because Dale was betting on a horse. And the horse at that time, because Michael had basically burned his bridge with Discovery by saying he wouldn't come on. Remember Man, Woman, Wild? That was actually a pivotal point. I write about it here in the book. 
And part of the deal was, hey, you know, when you're told, if you do well, you'll get a producer credit. And that's really important in this business. I mean, look at Mark Burnett. It's created by Survivor. That is what made him a multi, multi millionaire. So if you get it created by multi millionaire, if you're a star on the on the front uh, on the on the camera, doesn't mean anything, especially financially. Yeah. But if you get created by, you get residuals forever and ever and ever, and you get called to by people to say, "Hey, what other ideas have you got? Let's do it." But Dale Comstock. In his own words, in an affidavit, although I do not know Michael Hawk, Mr. Hawk, personally, he has called me three times on the telephone to talk about his relationship with Mr. Tetai. You know, basically kind of like insu insinuating that, that uh, Michael is stalking Tetai when it's actually the other way around. And Michael and Ruth had to get a restraining order in the state of Texas against, like, Lifetime. Against Tetai. But there he's saying he's never met him, and yet he was on a show, One Man Army, with him. And that was when? Oh, yeah. 2011. He made his affidavit in 2015. Oh, yeah. And guess what? Uh, yeah. That's the full affidavit right there at the back of the book. Oh, yeah. Full affidavit. So, this is brother against brother. Remember, Dale Comstock, Special Forces. CAG. Michael Hawk, Special Forces. What the hell is happening here? And then Joseph Tentai, who's like the, the, the poster boy for uh, Stolen Valor. Yeah. They loved him so much and protected him so much at Discovery so that by the time he went off and killed those dogs in Bolivia with a knife, you gotta wonder, what happened there? He went off and killed, what was it, it was said, uh, three dogs in Bolivia. <laughs> Remember I said, Discovery should stay out of Bolivia? Well, that was the first tale. So they put a do not, do not admit. That's an actual document from Discovery. Do not admit Joe Tetai. This was their golden boy that they were actually, remember I said like the golden boy now is, is, is Brett Tudor? Uh, but back then it was, well, the one who was the honorable one was Michael Hawk in the situation. And <laughs> suddenly, when they couldn't, couldn't hold the water back anymore, they put a do not admit restraining on him. Boy, look at that. Man. It's just like, you got, you got to wonder how many people in felony or prisons and all that kind of stuff. So what shows are those? Oh, yeah, that's uh, Richard Wyatt from American Guns. Yeah, doing straw straw search uh, sales on guns because he didn't have a license in FFL. And then Will Hayden, Ooh, man, that's another one of the uh, uh, creepy psychopath predators. Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, I met him, Will Hayden. I met him at uh, Shot Show. A lot of people met him in Shot Show. Very charismatic. And that's the thing about psychopaths. Psychopaths can be extremely, extremely charismatic. But it's why they do it. See, when you have someone who's charismatic because they really like you and they want to connect with you and you have this, this uh, conversation going and you're talking back and forth and, and you feel a connection, you know, and um, that's charisma. And, and it's a good thing because this is a sharing. But then you've got the charisma that's, that's a tool that's used by a psychopath. And basically, it's like a predator. It's a predator. I mean, the psychopath is going in, he's going for the kill, and he's using every, he or she is using every tool they can to achieve their means. And they will run you over in order to achieve those means, to achieve those goals. Oh, yeah, and then Mark Rackley. Mark Rackley, yeah, that's him in prison. That was after that case, you know? Yeah, oh, we're losing you here. Can we get you there? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, Mark Rackley, that's... Uh, uh, Megan's uh, ex that she perjured herself for. Yeah, in Beaumont, Texas. Yeah, is that Jackson? Yeah, Jefferson County. Yeah, right over the border with uh, Louisiana. Oh, yeah, so what happened? So, yeah, Mark Rackley is driving his boat, according to the arrest record. He's driving his boat. Uh, he's driving He's driving a vehicle pulling a boat. Excuse me. 
Yeah, I kept on thinking. Remember, it was just like, God, were they bringing it in from, you know, the Caribbean? No. It was already in the States. But what they were doing is they were smuggling it across to, uh, it seems like it was Louisiana. Um, but I can't be firm on that one. I just know where he was arrested. I didn't know which direction he was going. So, so the cop pulls him over because he sees, hey, man, the, the guy's driving kind of like erratic on the road. So don't drive erratically on the road. When you're pulling a boat trailer in in, in Jefferson County, Texas, so it gets pulled over, and the uh, the arresting officer said said in his report, "Yes, I noticed the smell of fresh resin." Yeah, because they they laminated the marijuana forty eight point eight pounds forty eight point eight pounds of uh, of uh, marijuana into the hull of the boat, which uh, yeah. That is uh, pretty freaking wild. So the, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's wild. We're, Discovery just, it's it's interesting. That was Animal Planet, remember? Animal Planet. It's like, kid. oh, and here, this is a wonderful photograph. That was taken in October. Okay, post it until he realized, oh, shoot, I can, like, yank that photograph. That's Jeremy with some, uh, some booty taken in Ecuador. Well, you know, it's illegal to grab booty in Ecuador. Yeah, metal detecting, Ecuador, coins, treasure hunting, scuba diving, ocean, Eureka, illegal, yeah. The data on that is wrong. That was the one that uh, Keith, before before Keith got all pissed off that I wrote this book, was like all excited about telling me all this stuff, you know, hoping it's, you know, kind of like, you know, helping me get this done, but then when the book comes out, he's like, you know, not happy. Oh well, truth hurts. So, yeah, man, this book, this is a tomb of the media, all about fake news, all about uh, artifact smuggling, breaking international laws, all for a reality show. It's like, you know, everybody, it's like these people down in Hollywood, it's like they can't come up with stories, and the big thing is like, who's paying? Well, Discovery's paying, but they're not paying that much. Really look at what they're paying in relation in relation to what they're making. I mean, God, this is like my guess on how much they probably made on Discovery on, on Treasure Quest. Just Treasure, Treasure Quest alone, it's probably each season about fifty million. Think about that, fifty million, because you're not just talking about U.S. broadcast. This is the thing that's really important, and this is important to play because remember the disclaimers. That's why I get all these these emails and and Facebook connections and 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 Instagram connects and it's like and it's in Portuguese or it's in Spanish, so I have to translate it and read it and then I have to write back and say, hey, you do realize it's a fully dramatized show, and it's totally fabricated. There are some origins of history, but that's like but that's like any fiction. When you write fiction, good fiction uses. Real historical and scientifically proven facts to build your story around. That's the same exact thing they did with Treasure Quest. Think about that. Then you got things like Honey Hitler. Man, they're they're scripting Honey Hitler. I mean, this is something that could have been really cool. I mean, I was really because yeah, I totally believe that that uh, Hitler escaped. I mean, the record is like yeah, he went to South America. You talked to South America, yeah. We all knew that, because who his allies were, all this kind of stuff. But because they can't track down and find the information and get solid reports from people, they've got to fill it in with their own fabrications and try and again to try and create drama, like that scene. I well, we'll talk about that later, Honey Hitler. But yeah, it's just oh, yeah, dual survival. See that? That's interesting. Yeah, those are the two scenes. Okay, there's the, the dual survival with Joe Tetai, you know, when they're in Chile, and they come upon the woman with the, with the uh, llamas. And the, uh, the llamas are, uh, the llamas are uh, um, all corralled around here. She's got the blue sweater. Okay, so that's the end of dual survival with Joe, Tet with Joe Tetai and uh, Cody Lundin. But then you've got that season in Bolivia. God, 
It's, yeah, the reason they had to do that one, because they deported. They had to actually get a security team. They hired a security team locally in Bolivia to take him to the airport and get him out of the country after he killed those dogs. But they couldn't have anybody available for deposition by Michael Hawk at that time. So they did a quick release. And at that time, they hid who the people were working on. According to Michael Hogg, he says that there was no credits. You never do that. You always give the credits to the cameraman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But Discovery didn't want the opposing legal to find out that they could actually depose these people about the mental state of Joe Tetai. So they're using the same clothes. Look at that. That is the same clothes for two different shows. Trying to make it look. So one was actually shot in Chile, and then they used old B-roll. Or actually, yeah, it was by that time it's going to be B-roll because it doesn't have Cody and uh, Joe Tetai together. It just has this woman coming out with her llamas and waving to the people. But it was all shot in Chile, and then it was used for Braving Bolivia. That was season six, episode four. Yeah. This is the game that they play. When, when does it actually sink into the FCC, the FBI, that it's fraud? And what's even worse about that, you know, President Trump is always talking about fake news. Well, you know, that fake news has been prepped for a long, long time. And if you don't go after the people who are benefiting from it, making a lot of money off of it, Oh, yeah, here's that Mark Rackley arrest record here. It's in the book. you got to get a copy. Yeah. Uh, that defendant stopped for traffic violation. The driver's action, as well as the strong smell of fiberglass resin, alerted the officer to possible drug trafficking. A search was conducted, and 44, no, 48.08 .08 pounds of marijuana was discovered. No tax stamp affixed. That was an interesting thing. No tap, uh, tax stamp affixed. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I had to contact the uh, DA in, uh, in um, uh, Jefferson County, Texas to find out what, what was that all about. It's really interesting. I mean, it's interesting how you learn about the law and state constitutions and how things change. You know, how, like the laws on, in California are just going nuts right now. And uh, that's why I don't live in California anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's so much other stuff in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's the uh, the Brett Tudor uh, DD-214 with the general discharge. And redaction. If there's nothing to hide, why is that redacted for a general discharge? Hmm. I have guesses, in my opinion. But, yeah, the treasure. Ask yourself. Ask others. Share this video with other friends. Have them subscribe. Ask them about why is it that they're finding all these treasures, all these artifacts, and yet there's no record of them. They're not being on display at any museums. Rightfully, legally, they're supposed to be turned into the local government. And I don't mean like the local police department. I mean they're supposed to be turned into the historical department for whatever nation. Brazil. Argentina, Cooper's Treasure, which islands was he on? Yeah, they're supposed to be turned in there. And then they're supposed to be displayed. And one of the reasons is for tourism. So when people come to the country, they go, yeah, this was on that show. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Okay. So, until next time. Oh, I think, yeah. I don't see any snow coming down. I might have to go out and take this for a run. Yeah. One of the other reasons I moved to Alaska is so I can have a backyard range. So when I have to do my work, because I am still a gun writer. I've been a gun writer since, uh, yeah, I started off as an outdoor columnist. I was the last outdoor columnist for the Times of San Mateo County in the San Francisco Bay Area. Did you know that? Yeah, that's when I had long hair all the way down to the middle of my back. And I'd go out in the field and I'd go duck hunting and I'd go fishing. And then I'd come back and I'd write about that. And then I'd go and shoot guns, the latest guns that come out, and I do reviews on them. So, yeah, I still do that. I constantly do that. And now I'm doing more of the video. But we'll go out, shoot some video, 
We're running this against a target. See how it feels. But man, I'm telling you, this is nice. And they have other models if you want to try it out with a Hogue, uh, Hogue grips. But they're pretty impressive. Almost as good as the skateboard tape. So on that note, Google Treasure Quest. Found treasure. And look at what that stuff was that was found. And type in museum. Type in historical institute. Delivery of. I'm not finding it. I don't have it. I have a guess. My honest opinion. One of the local producers in whatever area we were at, like a local fixer, said, Hey, can I have that when you guys go? It's my own, it's my own little keepsake. It's probably sitting on somebody's mantle. <laughs> And I mean not only the fabricated artifacts, but also the real stuff that was stolen by Jeremy and his brother in Peru. Well, purchased from people who stole it, grave robbed it in Peru. And by the way, did you know that I contacted the embassies for each one of them? And no word back. So this is my beef. It's like, if you don't even protect your own national history... Why should you even give a damn when another country invades you and takes you over? Think about that. If you're not willing to protect your own nation's history, why would you even care about the government that you have in your country? You might as well just like, you know, get down on your knees and just surrender to whoever wants to take over. That's the way that stuff goes. On that note, I'll talk to you later. Have a good weekend.